So my goals for January for Spanish were to finish four books, to get 20 hours of listening practice, and to finish Elite Season 2 and a season of Puff and Rock. And I did none of those. <laughs> if you have been along with me so far on this journey, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Jo, I'm learning Spanish. And in November, I read two chapter books. In December, I read The Hunger Games, which was a big accomplishment for me. And then in January, things just didn't go quite exactly the way that I planned them. So I felt like I had a good idea of what was working for me, and then I just didn't feel like doing it. So let's look at how my reading went for the month. I have really not done that much in Spanish this week. Um, it's been kind of a YouTube week. I put out a couple of videos, but I have managed to read a tiny bit too little tiny chapters of Charlotte's Web, and I have read a little bit of James and the Giant Peach. So I've never read this before or seen the movie, and so I was like, oh, this looks like a really cute, like, kid's story, blah, 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 and then I get literally the first page and the parents get eaten by a rhinoceros or whatever, and I was like, oh, funny story, as it turns out, I don't actually have a lot of farm vocabulary in Spanish, so this is actually <laughs> quite um, difficult for me. Hello, I have a long weekend this weekend, which is very exciting, and so I'm going to try for at least two hours of Spanish every day because I have gotten a little bit out of the habit. I have found a couple things that I have really liked doing, but there are other things that I've kind of fallen off of, one of which being my reading. I am still only, I just hit 65 pages of James and the Giant Peach. This has been taking me longer than I expected to read it. Just in general, this month has been kind of funny because last month, I, you know, I read The Hunger Games and I was feeling so good about my Spanish. I knew that my listening needed a lot of work, but I was feeling so good about my reading. And I still am, I'm not discouraged or anything, but it is really funny because I blitzed through The Hunger Games and this children's book is taking me way longer. So it's just funny, the, the ups and downs, feeling like a total beginner again, but that is totally okay. I have been doing some Spanish this week, but not a ton of Spanish. I am in a little bit of a slump, partially because I knew that Roald Dahl was super problematic, like proudly anti-Semitic, which is obviously horrific. I, I did not buy this book myself. Definitely don't support him, but in reading this book, he's also so fat phobic. That has kind of put a damper on reading this book. I do still want to finish it. I only have like 45 pages left. Yeah, disappointing content matter in this. There's probably other things in here as well, but my Spanish isn't good enough to pick up on them. <laughs> but yeah, it has been good for learning. I've definitely learned new vocabulary. It's done. Yay! Hello. It is the 28th of January, and this has been quite a chaotic month, I feel like. Looking back at my goals for this month, I wanted to finish four books in Spanish. I have finished one, and I'm not even close to finishing another one. I think part of the problem with this month that I didn't allow for was just the fact that I am in a bit of a slump in general. I have not really been reading in English either. I really, really hate winter. I definitely get the, the winter blues very badly. So I do think that that factored in, but also I just didn't allow enough freedom for myself to try new things and to acknowledge that I'm not always going to want to do exactly the same thing. So for listening, I found the show Puffin Rock on Netflix, which is a children's show. It is very cute. It's a perfect show. If it is dubbed into a language that you are a beginner in, I highly recommend it. A very, very basic children's show, but I'm watching it without subtitles. 20, 25 minute episodes, and each one has three 
different stories in it, but there are some little episodes that I can understand almost entirely, and then there are some that I am like, wow, what? <laughs> um, I also have watched an episode of Hilda, which is another animated children's show on Netflix, and I've really been enjoying that. But ultimately, I think I only watched probably four or five total episodes of shows without subtitles this month. I did try a bunch of different podcasts and I'm kind of finding ones that I like. I haven't found any that I'm totally obsessed with yet, but I think that I have several that will work fine for now and hopefully I will continue to find more that I enjoy. So today the only thing I have done so far in Spanish is finish the show Entre Lizadas on Disney Plus. It is an Argentinian Spanish show which has been really good for listening to that accent. It was not a good show. <laughs> um, it was fine but it was very Disney show from I don't know the early 2000s or something just created in modern times. Not worth like 10 hours of my life if it weren't for the Spanish speaking. <laughs> I wanted 20 hours of listening practice. I have not done that. I think I've done about 10, but more than that because I don't track all of my listening. So how I track my language learning is that I only track things if I am focused. I do track passive learning, like listening to podcasts or watching shows, but only if I'm actually paying attention. Definitely have not gotten to 20 hours, but that was kind of an aspirational goal. <laughs> A kind of combined listening and writing and reading activity that I discovered this month was transcribing stories from the thespanishexperiment.com run by the same person as The Fable Cottage. What I have been doing is listening to it all the way through without looking at the transcript at all, and then listening to it again, looking at the transcript, and then I start actually transcribing it. So going into February, I have one free story left on the SpanishExperiment.com, and unless my enjoyment of doing this changes, uh, with that one, I think I will do the three months of The Fable Cottage to get the rest of the stories and continue with this because I do think that this was really effective and I also want to support them for putting out this amazing free resource. For the rest of the ones that I do, I really want to make sure that I am speaking them out as well because that is a really good exercise for mirroring or parroting or whatever you want to call it. Another thing that I tried this month for the first time was learning a Spanish song. I have sort of been resistant to doing this, not because I was opposed to the idea or anything, I just don't really feel like I retain lyrics that well even in English, so I was not confident that I was going to be able to do it well in Spanish. But with how uninspired I was with most other things, this seemed like a good way to add something different to my routine, and I did really enjoy it. I learned the song No Hay Nadie Mas by Sebastián Itra. I believe. And yeah, it was really fun. I don't know how much I actually learned from it, but it was fun. <laughs> Towards the end of the month, I discovered the app Closemaster. Well, I didn't discover it. The Fluent Show talks about it. Anna Lanx talks about it. Someone else mentioned it after I'd already started using it. I think it was Elise Speaks, but Anyway, I started doing Clothes Master and I am really, really enjoying that. It's a vocabulary app where you fill in the blank on a sentence. If you do the like fluency fast track, it takes you in order from like the hundred most common words all the way through to, in Spanish at least, the more than 50,000 most common words. So lots of words. I am currently in the 500 most common. <laughs> but that has been a really nice activity and I do feel like it is maybe more effective than like something like Duolingo. Honestly, I don't really know how effective any of these are because I definitely always think that I am more focused on the beating the game aspect than I am on the remembering the Spanish aspect, but 
you know, it's something, I guess. And strangely, also at the end of this month, I got really into studying grammar for a couple days. I looked up the present progressive in my reference books and online and wrote out a whole summary of that as well as direct and indirect object pronouns and where they are placed. I want to do reflexive verbs next. I also started a new notebook, which was very exciting. And I wrote out this whole summary and then I was like, this notebook only has a couple pages left in it. So if I'm doing something and I want to flip back to this, it's going to be in a different notebook. So. I'm still going to use the last couple pages of this. I'm just going to use it for like, um, <laughs> I have really found the lessons on SpanishDict.com to be very helpful for grammar. They have very in-depth quizzes that kind of have whole conversations in videos that play and you kind of fill in the blank on the conversation in order to reinforce the concept that they taught in the lesson. So that has been a really, really helpful free resource. I have really enjoyed learning grammar a lot more now that I have been exposed to the language so much. Instead of trying to learn a grammar concept that I have never even seen before, and then backfilling in with examples of that. To each their own, obviously, but that is what has been making sense for me. So, while I failed all of my goals for January on paper, I still feel like it was a pretty good month learning how to accommodate my moods and my interests throughout the month. I find these monthly vlogs very motivational to make, just the ability to check in and feel like, you know, I have some accountability on what I'm doing day to day. But I also want to make sure that they are entertaining or useful or motivational or all of the above uh, for you guys. So if there is anything that you would like to see or hear more of, definitely let me know and I will try to incorporate them in the future. For now, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.